Hello. Today we are at Kostari's Rice Farm in Anaku, Ayamelum local government area of Anambra State. We'll be talking with the general manager later. There has been so much buzz about agricultural revolution taking place in Anambra State. The state can now boast of large mechanized rice farms like this one you can see now. Also, India Anambra now export fresh produce to UK and the rest of Europe. There's so much happening in the agriculture in Anambra, thanks to the visionary leadership of Governor Willie Madabrochuku Obiano. But you may ask, how did we get there? In this episode, we'll take an in-depth look into the agricultural revolution that will make Anambra State the food basket in our country, Nigeria. My name is Chido Obidiegu, and you are watching Anambra Repair. Before the advent of the William Obiano administration, Anambra was probably known for trading and merchandising, among others. Farming in the state was majorly subsistence. But the story has changed now. Farming has taken top spot as a huge money spinner and a massive employer of labor in Anambra state. Our first report explains in detail the strategy deployed by Governor Obiano in this respect. The journey to this remarkable revolution started when Governor Obiano made agriculture the number one pillar of his economic blueprint. That was the first indication. The second pointer was when only four days in office, he inaugurated a 14-man committee on agriculture made up of highly experienced agronomists. He charged the committee with the responsibility of producing a blueprint for a comprehensive development of agriculture in the state. Agriculture is uh, my number one pillar. Agriculture is important, uh, it's a critical pillar in my four pillars. With agriculture, it will help to create employment, you know, because of uh, both the main farming itself and the value chain that agriculture attracts. In a distinct interpretation of the governor's big idea for agriculture in the state, the committee produced the Anambra State Agricultural Transformation Blueprint with the goal of ensuring food security and job creation to mechanize farming, which will encourage the establishment of large and medium agro-allied industries. However, agriculture makes a great demand on land and with Anambra's land mass of only 4,448 square kilometers, it takes a careful planning to find enough land for mechanized farming. Same with the siting of industries. But Governor Obiano demonstrated great vision when he set up the Anambra Land Acquisition Committee to work in conjunction with the Anambra State Investment Promotion and Protection Agency and SIPA to overcome this problem. No sooner had the well-articulated agriculture blueprint been made public, agriculture suddenly became one of the most sought-after investment windows as Anambra State is endowed with a vast expanse of unutilized land which is almost 100% arable. Resiliency wanted investors who come in uh, be able to see the clarity of purpose looking at the model and schemes that we run in the state. And so we zoomed into that and we're able to provide um, a showcase, a, a map showing our crop production. So what we've done is we zoomed into the, into the blueprint and we're able to extrapolate this. Um, in these locations you can see that you have locations where yams are being produced, uh, locations where machineries are, are done, and cassavas are growing and all whatnot. And so what investors, uh, once that was done, investors come in and they look at the blueprint, look at exactly what we've zoomed in out of this, and interest and the gaps are being filled. So that's one of the great things that we have been, been able to achieve with His Excellency's blueprint, to guide our investors as to where they got to invest, to guide them on the reliability of our land and locations within the whole lo local government to achieve um, the utmost aim in this sector. 
Through Ansipa, Obiano's one-stop investment stream roller, the following companies have made significant contributions of over $1 billion to the investment pool of Anambra State through agriculture. They are Koscharis Farms, $200 million, Novtech Farms Limited, $50 million, Joseph Agro Limited, $180 million, Excel Farms Limited, $250 million, Dell Farms and Songhai Farms Limited, $150 million, Silos and Grains, $40 million, Linden Integrated Farms, $180 million, Tri-City Integrated Farms, $11.4 million, MIP Farms and Greenhouse Limited, $8.5 million. Indeed, it is no longer in doubt that Anambra State is marching solidly into its manifest destiny under the powerful watch of Governor Willie Obiano as he is changing the narrative of the state through agriculture. His emphasis on agriculture is very, very important. First of all, any country that cannot or any state or any town or that cannot feed itself cannot aspire to greatness. And Anambra State can feed itself and even contribute to feeding other people by export of agricultural products. And I think the thrust is put into that is, uh, is, very, is very praiseworthy. Now, we know what to cultivate where and when. Rice and cassava are some of our staple foods. Statistics show that Anambra consumes about 320 metric tons of rice a year, but produced so little. The Obiano administration is turning things around and is on course to achieving rice sufficiency as we are set to produce 210 metric tons by the end of year 2016. With me is Mr. Barat, General Manager of Koshari's Farm, Anako. Nice meeting to you. Pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Barat, tell us about this uh, big investment that we we'll have here. What is the size of this farm? Okay. So, Kosteras Rice Farm is a very big uh, step towards uh, agriculture, okay, in Anambra State, especially in the, towards the rice industry. This farm has got total area of 2,500 hectares. And we are using the latest technology, okay, to big make, make this one as fully mechanized for rice farm. Latest technology means we have got a big John Deere tractors like 530 HP tractors. We have got all the equipments from Caterpillar, okay, which are the best in the world and we are all imported from USA. When this farm will be ready, we will have a almost a 200 kilometer of road network will be there within the farm, internal, basically. And have then you done any harvesting? We have done harvesting last year, okay. okay we have yeah. done for last year only uh, 300 hectares we planted last year, okay. but without land leveling, our equipment are not arrived at that time, okay. okay. But this year is done as like a professional, the way it's supposed to be done. You know, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Anambra State, Chief Willie Madabroch, yeah. you know, he keeps talking about, you know, employment generation. Yeah. How many, how many, how would you, I mean, you know, what is the population of, of the employed? Uh, yeah, here? every day. We have got uh, casual workers, almost 200 casual workers every day work, okay. And then we have got on roll, okay. On roll is almost 100 workers which we have got on roll, okay. Okay. So uh, this is the employment generation. But when the uh, this farm will reach full capacity, well, uh, I'm estimating that almost 800 to 900 casual workers will work every day. So what would you advise other farmers, you know, other investors who? Who, who are, you know, on the fringes of, you know, deciding to, you know, come into Anambra State and invest. Anambra State has got a conducive atmosphere for investment, but basically they need to, they should under, come to the number State, understand the potential, where they can do the investment, okay, and then go wholeheartedly. They should not go in between and come out. If you, anything uh, uh, you do it, if you do wholeheartedly, at the end you will achieve the desired results not just for their own company, for the communities and for their Anambra state also. Okay, some people are saying that it is because of the fact that there is security in Anambra state, that that is why we're having a lot of investors coming to Anambra state. Would you, would you, you know... I fully agree on this aspect, okay. Since I come here, I've seen uh, for the last two years, there is no problem in security. Good. Okay, so that's why I really appreciate the efforts of His Excellency to provide uh, 
security aspect for especially for expatriates north and for the local people also thank you very much mr barrett thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you so much about rice we now have anambra rice which anambra people are enjoying even others who are not from anambra are enjoying anambra rice because it's one of the best brands of rice in nigeria now we are leaving Koshari's farms and we are moving to Linden Integrated Farms where we are going to be discussing poultry and animal farm. From there we we'll move on to Dell Farm, Songhai, where we will be discussing fruits and vegetable production. Welcome to Linden Integrated Farms, one of the several private multi-million dollar concerns that have keyed into Governor Obiano's agricultural revolution. But first, let us enlighten you on how the government is changing the fortunes of small-scale farmers, or local farmers as you may call it, who act as outgrowers, partnering with large commercial farms such as this. Enjoy our report. The Obiano Agric model encourages the use of outgrowers whose resilience and enterprise complement the larger farms to complete the circle of a neatly organized sector that draws strength from within itself. To further encourage the local farmers, they have been persuaded to form cooperatives, register with the Minister of Agriculture, Mechanization, Processing and Export in order to enjoy government incentives. They have now been metamorphosed into outgrowers, partnering with the larger commercial entities in the state, thus earning more income. The Minister of Agriculture has created a robust online platform from where the over 1,800 registered cooperatives and stand-alone farmers are monitored real-time. Text messages or robocalls can be sent to each and every farmer while the ministry can receive feedbacks through same platform. The ministry also makes house calls on all the farmers on their radar, giving the commissioner and his monitoring evaluation team a first-hand knowledge of how the farmers are faring. Recently, Governor Obiano made a bold move to deepen the agricultural sector in the state. Flagging off the 2016 farming season, the governor gave out checks ranging from 300,000 naira to 5 million naira to cooperatives registered with the ministry. The checks were drawn from the 1 billion naira microcredit scheme of the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is competently managed by an agency created by the governor known as the Anambra Small Business Agency, ASBA. So we know all the people that we give money. We know their residents. We know that they are real farmers. You know, and uh, this is not the first time they got money. They also got uh, part of the money last year. Some new people joined them. On the whole, 15,000 people will be sharing 1 billion naira. And we'll be giving more as we get from CBN. You know, and uh, what is important from my background as a banker is for this money we give them to work home. And it will, because these people are so happy. And we are putting the uh, enablement in place to ensure that... Uh, you know, there's a means uh, where their goods are bought at a competitive rate and uh, you can see all the farmers are very happy. We are happy to be one of the be beneficiaries today. And I pray that uh, the money given to us, the sum of 3,755,000 given to us will be used judicially. I feel very, very happy, very, very overwhelmed. In fact, I'm only I didn't know how to explain. But I didn't know that it's going to be a dream that's come this true. But since has been a dream come true, I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy. I'm more than happy. Governor Obiano also distributed 150,000 tons of improved cassava stems and 300,000 tons of rice seedlings and 240 metric tons of tomato worth over 2 million naira to various farmers' cooperative societies that will guarantee a higher yield of produce in the coming harvest season. In addition to the provision of 100 tractors to till their farms free of charge during the planting season. The state government is concluding plans to encourage Indianambra to go into the rearing of livestock in commercial proportions. I want to encourage the people doing a FIBO, Ibo cow, a FIBO, uh, to grow it in large quantity. We are going to give them money. 
you know, so that in two years we'll stop uh, importing any form of EFI from anywhere. It's also EFI when Anambra Kaigane, you know, and uh, you can see the beautiful EFI displayed there all over the place. And we also want to encourage EWIBO or KUIBO. You know, all those uh, things say the Malundi, but they are going to come back in, in what we are doing. The state's government has also trained interested youth in the newly established Agricultural Training Center in Mbaku. The graduates were trained in staple crop cultivation and processing, agriculture, pigry, and horticulture, amongst others. These graduates will be empowered through ASBA to start their own micro-medium enterprises. With the support and proper guidance from the state government, there is a growing number of cooperative farmers in the state, which translates into food security and more job creation for our teaming youth. This obviously is exciting times to be a farmer in Anambra State. Indeed, the Green Revolution is creating more entrepreneurs in this sector. Now, back to where we are. This rather large structure behind me is a bread house, part of the Linden Integrated Poultry Farm. This automated poultry farm promises to be the biggest producer of poultry products east of the Niger. Our next report is on Linden and Del Farm Songhai Farms, just two out of several agro concerns that have found the Obiano agri blueprint alluring and enticing. Linden Integrated Farms is situated in Ibarium. This $61 million project in partnership with the Anambra State Government is for the development and operation of a modern integrated farm to go into full-scale production of poultry, meat, and eggs. The large sheds that will house the birds are currently being installed. On completion, there will be four rearing houses that will accommodate 100,000-day-old chicks each. The layers houses will be 12 in number and will each hold 85,000 layers capable of producing over 1 million eggs a week. For poultry meat, an automated broiler house will have the capacity to prepare and produce thousands of packages of frozen chicken. When completed, it will be the largest producer of poultry meat and eggs east of the Niger and would create about a hundred direct jobs, but much more in the marketing and sale of finished products. Also situated in Ibarium is Dell Farm Limited, which in conjunction with the Songhai Regional Center and in partnership with the state government has gone boldly into the cultivation of highly lucrative cash crops with the intention of developing a local full-scale multi-farm business concern which will combine agricultural technology, industry and hospitality services. Total investment is valued at over $100 million. Cash crops being cultivated include hybrid species of sorghum, wheat, banana, popo, msoka pepe, vitamin A maize, and seven-sided okra. Also included are cucumbers, tomatoes, among others. The economic impact will no doubt be felt as over 750 direct jobs and 5,400 indirect jobs will be created. The good news from Dell Farm is that Anambra State has now started producing wheat in commercial quantity. The other good news is that very soon the sorghum produced in Dell Farm in Ibarium shall be used in brewing beer in Sabmila breweries in Onicha. Talks have reached advanced levels for a perfect synergy between the two companies that will save Nigeria a lot of foreign exchange expended in importing this basic raw material for brewing beer from outside the country. That is the power of vision. <laughs> Wow, eggs, eggs everywhere, protein assured and guaranteed. It is no longer news that India number now produce certified vegetables exported to the UK and Europe. In our next report, we unearth the intricacies and the government involvement in achieving this.
The opening of an export desk by the Anambra State Ministry of Agriculture, Mechanization, Processing and Export is a clear indication that the Obiano-led administration is focused and determined to diversify her economy through the export of fresh produce, not only to other states, but also to the rest of the world. The Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with its technical partners with prerequisite expertise in exporting produce, Produce from Nigeria visited various communities in the state to ascertain where certain vegetables could be best cultivated in commercial quantities. I'm grateful to the governor for taking the initiative to want to propel this beautiful state to the world. Our purpose here today was to come and see where the Ugu that was sent to the UK came from and I was so impressed with the quality of the Ugu that came out of Anambra State. It was soft, it was almost like softer than spinach, and I wanted to come and see the people who actually produce these beautiful products and see how we can work together to get this out to the world market. We found out that um, Anambra, this particular brand, um, happens to be, um, I'll call it the best. Because when I say the best, um, in terms of um, the, the, the softness, and then when we use it to juice, the juice was fantastic. The Ministry of Agriculture sought to train interested local farmers on best practices. These farmers were given orientation in cultivating farm produce that conforms to international specifications and standards. The consultants found out that the best grade of ogo is cultivated in Ununu in Anambra West Local Government of Anambra State and in Obaru Local Government. This led to Anambra being certified by the appropriate authorities. However, exporting fresh produce posed some challenges. The state government stepped in by providing world-class logistic support. Although there's a lot of challenges in between, um, in terms of getting the product fresh uh, to Lagos, because that is the point of exit. And you know what it takes to harvest a product here and not have to now take it across states, interstates to get it to Lagos. It's a process. So we overcome that by working also to with the government that provided um, a, a grand logistics system. They aided us in getting what they call a cooling van, a temperature control van that they can take this product safely into Lagos. Anambra farmers are fast adopting the best practices in cultivating crops in a manner that meets the international standards for export. This bitter leaf Unubu farm in Abatete and Scent Leaf Nchamu farm in Obaru are among many farms in the state which are part of the Anambra State Export Program. Sometimes last year, around the December time, so they call us for, a, for training. You understand? Anambra State Government, they invite some, some people from UK. They came, they taught us how to maintain our farm and how to make it more organic uh -huh. than inorganic. That organic materials are being used in the UK market. So, and they, are, they, they taught us to, to produce our own in a way, in organic way. And then we maintain it. Since then, we have been using organic materials to treat all our farms. Like this ones now you are seeing, it's purely organic. Uh -huh. When it undergoes the, 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 the process of uh, you know, washing it now, uh -huh, it will be very, very sweet and greenish and soft also. It was therefore no surprise when Anambra State made headlines in January this year with the export of its first certified consignment of vegetables, Ogo and Onubu, that is bitter leaf, in commercial quantity to the United Kingdom. This marked the turning point in Governor Obiano's quest to make Anambra State a top three agricultural state in Nigeria. Since then, the fresh vegetable exported are estimated at over $5 million and it's still rising. We're doing well on vegetable export. Uh, we've exported well over five million, like people are saying, it's well over five million dollar worth of uh, vegetables to United Kingdom. You know, uh, Onubu and Ogo, uh, uh, among other things. Uh, sometimes they add potato. If you're looking at the value when the government say five million dollars, people looking at the value of five million dollars, there's a lot involved in that five million dollars. 
the logistics setup. There's so many things involved in the five million. And as a matter of fact, the five million dollars is not by Anambra State government because I read some people saying, oh, Anambra State made five million dollars, so why are they borrowing money? Mm -mm. It's a private sector. People like you and I came in here, did their business. If Chinese government today, oh, China did one trillion dollar worth of business, it's not Chinese government, it's the people of China. But the government are the ones that made the policy create the enable environment for it to happen. So $5 million is not the profit made by Anambra State government. It's not the revenue made by Anambra State government. It's business that the Anambra State government created the enable environment for people to do. That's what it is. And I'm telling you, it's a lot more coming. When next you are in UK or Europe, where we have already exported to, or the Americas, which is coming soon, and you are eating your vegetable or onubu soup, chances are it's from Anambra State. That's all for our program today. If you missed our previous episode, you can watch us on our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. For comments and observations, text to the number on the screen. Our next episode will explore Obiano's 10-year rolling plan for education that has sustained the standard of education in Anambra State. We look forward to having you next week, where we will continue to show you how Willie is working. These are facts, and facts are sacred. My name is Chido, and you have been watching Anambra Rebirth. <laughs>